Wow. The enthusiasm over there. <laughs> How about that? Thank you for the K Net audience. We have a bigger one than normal. Right? We do. Yeah. Thanks to Miss Harold's first hour class. So yes, props to you guys. Shout out to them. Everybody, round of applause for you guys. Yeah. Um, well, welcome back to K Net Talk. Happy Friday the 13th. Ooh. So let's hope this broadcast goes well. Yeah, let's not spill the coffee on the laptop. Oh. That would be good. <laughs> That's All bad luck. Right. We have a lot to talk about, and we have the court here to show you some things about Spirit Week next week. But first, 9-11 um, was this week, and it was the 12th anniversary of the attack on the World Trade Center. And so there was a discussion on the radio I heard about should 9-11 be a national holiday? Like, should we get school and work off and stuff? So what do you guys think? I don't know. That's kind of hard to tell. Um, I would say yes, just because it was such a tragic event in our history, and um, like everyone, everyone obviously knows about it, and like everyone was impacted by it, and I think like a day off would be kind of a good way to kind of remember it, more so than just like constant, like just an average day, I mean, because it was an average day turned into tragedy so right. fast. Yeah, I was um, actually doing a little bit of research on this last night, and some of the problems that I think we could run into if they did make it a national holiday was um, obviously Labor Day was really close, so one issue is going to be that the U.S. would either have to move Labor Day to a different date or deal with two short weeks in a row, and um, if you have two short weeks in a row like that, it's kind of surprising, I find out. Um, holidays like that, they actually cost the government a lot of money. According to, um, according to a certain source, every holiday costs the federal government $450 million in em employee pay and lost productivity. So that could be one issue with um, making it a holiday. So That is a good thought. I guess that kind of puts it into perspective. And that, like, that's why it's not, obviously. <coughs> um, also, I don't know if you guys thought about Pearl Harbor is not a national holiday. We don't get school and work off for that. So it's, it's similar. Yeah. I similar. Yeah, well, I think I feel like I... I'm pretty sure there isn't a holiday that is focused on like one of our national tragedies. So I'm just, it, it, it might be kind of hard logistically for them to pull off. But nonetheless, you know, um, it's definitely a good time to take time to remember, you know, all of the heroes that were made on that day and all the um, people that lost loved ones. It's already kind of a day of remembering. And I think that's good. It's just to each year remember the impact it had on our country. Mm -hmm. So. You know, there's a lot of changes that happen through like airport security and, uh, and just like foreign affairs and stuff with our country. I feel like 9-11 really impacted us more than we even know now. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, that was a national impact, but right now we are currently being impacted in our school by Eagle Hour. And so that started on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. And Today we will have our third day of it. I think it's going a little smoother as the day goes on. Yeah, I think that people are kind of starting to get the hang of lunch shifts, when to eat, and how to like, just they're kind of getting the hang of where the crowds are not going to be. And I think the congestion is going to start to kind of go down as people continue to get used to just having that 70 minutes every day. Well, I think for me personally, like I'm still trying to get used to like how to like structure my time. Like I feel like there's so much going on with like, meetings for different clubs and like sports marketing and getting that done and all of that stuff that like I don't know how to handle my time so like I feel like as the eagle hours progress and the more time we have to kind of plan that stuff and people will be more organized with their time and it won't be as congested in the, the lunchroom and things like that. Yeah you know I was thinking about this today another kind of interesting fact about eagle hour um, or just like kind of an interesting aspect of it what it kind of does is it almost prepares us for like the real world when when a lot of people, you know, they move into an office job, you do get an hour off to eat lunch and manage your time. So it kind of gets you ready in that aspect, giving you a taste of what that's like to have that big block of time to take a break from your daily work. Well, I definitely wouldn't say it's bad for us at all. Mm, like, no. I feel like it's nothing but a productive time for most people. I feel like most people are getting homework done or, I mean, obviously eating lunch. I mean, lunch needs to be eaten. I mean, you can't miss a meal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and just getting stuff done, getting ahead in like in your work week I guess basically so you're not behind yeah definitely helpful and I'm excited to see how it goes the rest of the year um football game tonight or yeah superhero theme how's that gonna look I mean I, Fort playing Osage. in the game playing in the game I'm not sure how the superhero theme is gonna look but I'm excited to see fans out there and supporting us tonight but um we play Fort Osage like Caitlin mentioned um it's gonna be a big game um, lost to him last year, so we'd like to avenge that loss. 
Um, and it's going to be a good game because both teams are pretty evenly matched and a lot of eyes are on it all throughout the Metro. So, Yeah, it's really going to be a good chance for – I think it'll be a good chance for you guys to um, – Get a get a look at a better team. You know, you've won the last two games by a combined score of 89 to nothing. So, you know, you really just kind of dominated the last two teams. And I think this is Florida Sage is obviously a really solid team. So this is going to be a good chance for you guys to get a good look at another team. For sure, for sure. Um, real quick before we move on, we have Miss Harold here. We're going to talk to her. But first, um, Caitlin Engel, you won our photo booth Twitter contest. So see Nick for your dish gift card. Job, Caitlin. How about that, Caitlin Engel. <laughs> Woo. All right, so you guys may have heard us announcing that there's an opportunity to go to Europe with Mrs. Harold, and so we're going to ask her a little bit about that. Um, where is this trip going to go, and when is it going to take place? We will be traveling, the, not next summer, but the summer after that, 2015, and we'll be going to Paris, Venice, Florence, and Rome, and the trip that is as, as it is planned also includes Versailles and Pompeii. Mm. A lot of cool destinations on that trip. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to Italy. Um, well, come on. <laughs> so seniors still have the option to go, even though we'll be graduated? It is for anybody. Even parents can go. Uh, and we will be in a group trip, so uh, you will have touring, but we will also get time on our own uh, to break up into smaller groups. So uh, if you plan, especially with the group, uh, seniors can come back. Uh, i be freshmen in college, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, can come back. Uh, anybody can join. Awesome. Sounds like a great opportunity. And where did you get the idea to plan this trip? Well, everybody here has to take the greatest class ever. That's world history. Uh, and because of that, if you've been in mine, you know that we take field trips. We go all around the world. Uh, we've been to Versailles. We've been to uh, Notre Dame. And uh, we just thought we'd finally actually uh, get to go. I'm still waiting for somebody to win the lottery and pay for it. But <laughs> yeah. until then, you have to pay for it yourself. Awesome. Um, okay. And... You're also the head volleyball coach, so how is volleyball season going for your girls? It's going pretty well so far. We've had four home matches that we started out with, uh, and we're 4-0. Uh, we have some big tests coming up tomorrow. Uh, we've had a really amazing home showing. Our crowd has been fantastic. We honored our veterans and our active service uh, members Wednesday night on 9-11. Uh, we've had uh, the girls have really played hard. And uh, the football guys, softball girls were even there last night in their uniforms, and people have come out. Sports marketing has really done a great job, and people have won prizes. So, yeah, we're do doing well. Awesome. You lost a lot of seniors and a lot of height on the team, too. How is that working for you? Uh, well, it just readjusts your game plan. Um, instead of hitting over blocks, now we kind of have to have um, a little more strategy. I think you guys are doing really great, especially you have a lot of girls that are young and going to be with the program longer, and that's going to be awesome. And real quick, from a teacher's perspective, how do you think Eagle Hour is going? I think for what, since nobody really knew what to expect, I think people have really quickly adjusted. Um, I have already supervised, so if anybody has a gold pass, just walk out, walk down the hall, just flash it, make our lives easier. We're going to ask for it, so just have it out. That will make things more smooth. Uh, tutoring, the people that came in, worked the entire time. I think that can only help. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you. down, and thank you for bringing your first hour class. Good job, so. Sosh. <laughs> We are having trouble with our video server right now, so we don't have any videos to play for you. That's why you missed our intro today. But um, Abby McGregor has made a music video, and there it's on. It's going to be on YouTube, and we'll tweet the link out. So be sure to follow our Twitter at Knet Talk and Knet and Talk Share One T. So um, as Ryan says, Knet Talk. It is what it is. <laughs> um, so next week. It's homecoming week, and the theme is under the big top. It's circus themed. And I know we're going to have a tough football game against Kearney, but I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, I think all in all it's going to be a really fun week. Um, football game, obviously Friday night, going to be obviously a rivalry game against our favorite school right here at North Kearney. So everybody make sure you come out to that. Also, we're going to have some really exciting spirit days, and I think – Abby is over with some of our homecoming candidates, and she's going to share with us those spirit days. Yes, I am, Ryan. Um, 
Here I have Mond I have Nick and Olivia. Can you guys come on out? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. You guys look nice. Can you do a little a little spin for us? Model of Superman cape. Nice. Um, what day are you guys representing? Well, like you said, we're representing Monday, and uh, the Spirit Week for Homecoming this year goes along with a little story of a little boy like myself, um, or a little girl like <laughs> like me. Yes. And uh, on Monday, it's our first journey to the circus. We call it Welcome to the Circus. So you dress like a little kid. I brought out my old overalls. Um, I look like a little farm boy with my cape and uh, my Mickey Mouse ears. What did you wear? And then I went along with the whole dressing up as a little princess. And then I also have my lovely Horton Hears a Who shirt. So bringing back some childhood movies. Or if, you know, Mondays are rough. So if you just want to wear your PJs that you wore when you were a kid, that's awesome too. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see Monday's people. Thank you. Next, we have Raj and Montana. Can you do a little, a little spin? Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, um, what day are you guys representing? Yeah. Uh, we are representing uh, Tuesday, which is running off and joining the circus. And part of the fun with the circus is basically how insane and crazy it is. So it's kind of your mix and match day, and you basically, well, wear whatever you can throw on you. And, uh, I mean, you can dress as a homeless person. You can dress as, you know, basically whatever you want, really. And do you have anything to add? Um, no, just go crazy with it. Have fun, guys. Um, next, we have Wyatt and Emily. You guys are looking nice. What is this? Um, actually, we are a clown, clowns in training, and so you wear bright colors or any clown attire that you can find. Um, just bright colors, fancy ties, wigs, you know, just look good. Just, you should wear a wig, kind of just completes the outfit, <laughs> that's all. Um, okay. I'm throwing over to the cheer interview, and then we will get back with the rest of the Spirit Week. Cheer. Hello, men, and I'm here with Delina and Courtney, who are members of the competition squad for our cheerleading team. And Delina, can you tell us a little bit about the state competition this weekend? Well, obviously, it's a competition this weekend that um, teams all around the state cheerleading teams um, compete against each other. So um, we're in the 4A large division, and we're going to be competing against about seven teams. Okay, and Courtney, how have you guys been preparing for state? Um, well, we've scheduled a lot of extra practices. We've really put in a lot of hard work, and we've beefed up our pyramid, and we've added in a lot of tumbling and new stunts. Okay, and Delina, can you explain how you'll get more points if you have people there cheering you on? Well, if there's people there cheering for us, we actually get more points for crowd involvement, so we hope to see all of you there. Okay, and Courtney, how has the loss of the seniors from last year affected the team? I mean, they were really good, and we lost a lot of good members. We lost really good dancers and basses and back spots. So, I mean, we're changing, but we're doing pretty good. Okay, and Delina, lastly, where and what time is the state competition? The state competition is in Columbia at the Hearn Center, I think. Yeah. Okay, um, and doors open at 5 o'clock, and our team performs around 6, and there's awards at 8, so be there. Okay, thanks, Delina and Courtney, and don't forget to come out and support the cheerleaders at State this weekend. Now let's send it over to Abby, who's sitting down with our homecoming court. I'm actually not sitting down yet, Alberta. I'm up with the next Thursday outfits. Can you come on out? <laughs> Peyton was struggling with some fur in his mouth before we did this interview, so let's hear what this day is. Uh, um, well, Thursday is animal uh, day. Unleash the animals. Yeah, parties. so basically just kind of come out dressed as an animal. You got or Emily you with her buddy. leopard print on, and it looks very nice. Or you have me, who's in this lion costume, and it's very restricting. But, you know, it looks good. I think it gives me a nice... Nice muscle definition, so I can't complain with that. So I'm excited for Thursday. Muscle definition is something you've never had before, so I'm sure it feels good. 
<laughs> okay. Well, so we can just wear animal print. That's, That's good. Work. Okay, That's sweet. Work. Now let's bring out Friday. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Caitlin, you want to do a little, a little spin? Okay. <laughs> um, Friday is class color day, and the seniors wear gold. Juniors wear navy, sophomores wear white, and then freshmen wear gray. And if you have your homecoming shirt, if you've already pre-ordered it, then we want you to wear that to the assembly. And yeah, so bring out your Eagle Pride on Friday. Sounds good. Well, I hope you guys have gotten excited for our spirit week. I am now going to sit down with the homecoming court and play. We have a uh, trivia game for you guys, Battle of the Sexes. So... Okay, we're going to start with the boys. Nick's going to answer for the boys, and Olivia's going to answer for the girls. You guys can discuss, though. So the first question is for the boys. On what piece of women's clothing would you be likely to find a wire? Our answer is a bra. Ding. <laughs> nice. That was good. One for the boys. Girls questions. The first one, who won the first Super Bowl? A, the Green Bay Packers, B, the Kansas City Chiefs, C, the Miami Dolphins, or D, the Oakland Raiders? Oakland Raiders. Um, that was actually not right. It was the Green Bay <laughs> Packers. Uh, Boys, your second question. Makeup can be a part of a woman's everyday life. Which of the following makeup brands cannot be found at Walmart? A, <laughs> MAC, B, Maybelline, C, CoverGirl, or D, Revlon? You're more concerned about being at Walmart. <laughs> We're going to go with Mac. That is actually right. That's, that's two for the boys. Um, girls, in basketball, there is a starting five. In baseball, there are nine players on the field. How many players start on each team in football? Right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, here's my other one for the boys. My last question. Your girlfriend says, I want a Perrier. And you say, okay, I'll get you one. What would you come back with? A, a small dog. B, a French sparkling water. C, an Italian purse. Or D, tiny white grapes. <laughs> yes. Well... <laughs> we're using our resources, uh, we're going with sparkling water. That is right. <laughs> Girls, unfortunately, even if I give you another question, you will not win. I'm sorry, but I'll give you one more, just, just for, just for fun. Um, which of these, which of these athletes does not have a shoe named after him? A, Kevin Durant, B, Derrick Rose, C, Wilt Chamberlain. D, Kobe Bryant, or E, Larry Bird? <laughs> Will Chamberlain. That's right. Nice. It is Will Chamberlain. So that concludes our Battle of the Sexes today. Unfortunately, the boys win. You know, girls, I was on your side. But that wraps up our show for today. So thank you for watching KNET. Um, we'll catch you next week. But we're going to send it over to Ryan and Caitlin real quick to wrap up the show. Thank you, Abby. Well, I'm not sure whether to be embarrassed that the guys won or proud of them. Honestly, they knew what Perrier was, they knew what kind of makeup. They saw the movie, right? Okay, they saw the movie. They saw Talladega Nights, so excuse me. Well, before we wrap up, Caitlin has a few things to say about Homecoming Week, so Caitlin. Um, remember with the Spirit Days, you can hashtag your pictures and tweet them, and you can win free tickets. Also, there will be golden tickets, so buy your tickets. You may get one free. There's a couple other contests, and um, it's going to be an exciting week, so I think that's all we have today. That's all we got for you guys. Catch you on the north side, Eagles.